Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would review this little video that I thought was very particularly interesting. And I actually did not think that I was going to see a video about this. But I kind of thought that this would, this would be a great video to review. Because I actually seen this, I believe, within the Facebook boxing post yesterday. And it was something about Boxing Rex, uh, you know, top 168 pounders of all time. And then, you know, I believe that on that list, as you see right there, they had Canelo Alvarez. So Canelo Alvarez as the greatest 168 super middleweight pound fighter ever. Of course, they had Joe Calzaghe at number two, Andre Ward at number three, Frosh at four, you know, and a multitude of other guys. And um, this is just my personal opinion on Boxing Rec. I really don't take any of the rankings seriously because <laughs> other than information about the records of certain fighters and where they're from, what reach they have, all that stuff seems to add up. But their boxing pound for pound list makes absolutely no damn sense whatsoever. And let me tell you what, Boxing Rec might have potentially the worst pound for pound list out of any other website, boxing channel, boxing media, or fighting media that I personally ever see out of anyone's. To be honest with you, I would rather take Dante's and Aki TV's list over that of Boxing Rec's list. And for those of you that know my opinions about their over emotionality, you know that that's saying a lot, <laughs> but it is what it is. Anyways, so the conversation mainly is of this video, of course, is that in my personal view, and of course we're having a logical conversation here because I don't get into this over emotional bullshit. You know, a lot of these guys, especially these LDBC and new media channels, they're on their pro racial over emotional you know, bullshit when it comes down to it. And of course, one of the fighters that they don't like is so Canelo Alvarez. Well, anyways, they of course, once again, put Canelo at the number one spot. And you notice that in the title of this video, it says ultimate disrespect. Andre Ward finally loses and they have Canelo Alvarez above him. Notice that there is no mention. <laughs> notice that there is no mention of Mr. Joe Calzaghe, who I believe was also one of the all-time great 168 pounders uh, when it comes down to it, but once again, the LDBC and new media, they don't like to mention Joe Calzaghe because, let's be real, he's a Caucasian fighter, <laughs> and they can't have him as one of the all-time greats, so that's why they love to use the excuse, you know, oh, Bernard Hopkins whooped his ass, you know, he was too old, all sort of stuff, and don't get it twisted, you know, he was 40-something in that fight, but he also was coming off of great wins over Winky Wright and, you know, Antonio Tarver and a certain amount of other fighters. He just couldn't be Joe Calzaghe. And if we're really going to go there about Bernard Hopkins, how many big, big wins did he really have in his career over people over his same size? And I've really stated this for a very long time. Bernard Hopkins is probably the most overrated all-time great fighter of all time. He is an all-time great fighter. But is he top 10? No. Is he top 20? No. Because whenever he fought fighters that were really his same size and that could handle his potential and his talent, he didn't win. It just is what it is. He was able to beat up on Felix Tito Trinidad and Oscar De La Hoya, guys that were pretty much natural 154 pounders when Bernard could have easily fought at 168, you know, if not even a little bit higher, you know, but when it came to Joe Calzaghe, when it came to Roy Jones, when it came to Chad Dawson, when it came to some of those other fighters, he couldn't beat him, you know, Jermaine Taylor, he couldn't beat those guys. It is what it is. But anyways, that's really besides the point here. Uh, we're going to talk about once again, do I believe Canelo Alvarez is the greatest super middleweight fighter of all time over Andre Ward and Carl Frost, or excuse me, not Carl Frost, but Joe Calzaghe, you know, because those two fighters would pretty much be the greatest 168 pounders that I can think of. Maybe other than that of Mr. Solo Canelo Alvarez, Carl Frost, of course, would potentially be up there and there might be a couple of others. But anyways, let's get straight into the video. Let's get straight into it. Andre Ward gets disrespected and put behind Canelo and others at 168 pounds for Box Rec's all-time super middleweight rankings. Wow. Once again, notice that he only mentions Andre Ward. There's no mention of Joe Calzaghe, uh, you know, who has pretty much the same, if not more, accomplishments than that of Andre Ward. He also was a two-weight division champion. Uh, but the reason why they don't mention Joe Calzaghe once again is because he has the wrong complexion. You know, it is what it is. But just to talk about this really quickly, 
Do I believe that Canelo Alvarez is above either Andre Ward or Joe Calzaghe in terms of the greatest 168-pounder of all time? Personally, no. I'm not saying that Canelo Alvarez cannot get there. And when you talk about all-time greats, like when you talk about where Canelo Alvarez ranks, you know, in terms of the all-time greats, I think that he's right there with both Andre Ward and Joe Calzaghe just in terms of the all-around resume and game and skill set that he has. You know, some may even debate him over those guys because Canelo, you could argue, has more A-grade names on his resume. And, of course, he's a four-way division champion while they were only two-way division champions. You know, however, that's up for debate. In my view, all those guys are pretty much around the same realm. You know, but once again, this this goes to show you the LDBC and new media, they always tell you that, oh, we're here for the justice of certain fighters and for honesty. That's not what they're really here for. Once again, basically, they're the old media version of, you know, basically a pro-black cult. That's that's really all they are. Oh. Let's talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, you guys see a very simple message from Andre S.O.G. Ward. It says, LOL, laugh out loud. Okay. And it says, Box Rex, all-time super middleweight rankings, thoughts. Now, I'm going to go over this... Now more is less with Cox Internet and Cox Mobile from fiber powered internet for middleweight rankings thoughts. Now I'm going to go over this horrible and I do mean horrible pound for pound list all time. I do agree and it is a very horrible list and I'm not just stating that just because Canelo Alvarez is on that 168 pound list at number one. I think that personally that's a little bit too soon. I think that if you're debating Canelo Alvarez there, that he at least has to defeat David Benavidez, you know, at the very least, um, you know, to kind of top that list. The reason why the list is really horrible is not that they have those three fighters in the top three. I would debatably have those fighters at the top three as well. You know, maybe you could debate Carl Frosch ahead of Canelo or something like that or one of the other guys. But, you know, that's that's still a little bit iffy. The, re the reason why the list is horrible is because they had certain fighters like Danny Jacobs and Demetrius Andre, certain fighters that have barely even fought there and really haven't even won a title there as some of the greatest 168-pounders of all time. I mean, it really just makes no damn sense. It says, number one, at the number one spot, Canelo Alvarez. Number two, Joe Calzaki. Then at number three, you have Andre Ward, who has been disrespected. Number four, the... Well, once again, Andre Ward, if you put him at number three, that's up to you. Personally, in my view, he's at the very least number two. If you have Joe Calzaghe over Andre Ward, I don't mind that. Canelo Alvarez being over Andre Ward, though, or Joe Calzaghe, I think it's a little bit too soon to say that, at least of the 168-pound weight division. Now, Andre, <laughs> like, I don't even know how the fuck he's on there. You know, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, or, or uh, you know, some of these other guys. Like, I don't even know how the fuck they're on there, to be quite honest with you. I, Andre Ward, beat Carl Froch. Number five, you have Mikhail Kessler. So, just rounding off the top five, let's unpack that. Somehow, some way, Canelo is number one, and he never fought anybody in the top five, and they're all-time top five list just peep how peep to play so again Canelo well there are certain guys that are ranked at number one of all time in a certain profession and they did not fight some of the top five guys of all time you know or they maybe did not beat some of the top five of all time in terms of NBA championships you know or other sports like if you take a look at Michael Jordan for example in the NBA finals most of his you know NBA finals wins they weren't over a debatable top 10 player of all time. You know, it was over Gary Payton. It was over that of, you know, uh, what was that dude's name? Clyde Drexler, you know, Carl Malone, you know, other guys like that. Of course, he beat Magic, you know, in 1991. But besides that, you know, there wasn't any other player. I think that you could debate clearly top 10 or, you know, top 15 of all time. You know, that doesn't mean that, you know, Michael Jordan did not defeat some great teams because he did. They were still very talented. It's just that none of the other players <laughs> were were on the same level as a Michael Jordan. Alvarez, who primarily fought at 54, moved up to 64 brief time. 
he's been undisputed, but all undisputers are not equal, right? And I'll get to that. In I do agree. But once again, let's stop trying to sit here and pretend like Canelo Alvarez just had the weakest undisputed run of all time. You know, uh, Boxing Ego and a lot of these other guys, you know, they try to uh, do this where they say that Canelo had the weakest, you know, undisputed run because he beat all these European white guys. Yes, he defeated three undefeated European fighters and one white boy from America. One white boy in Caleb Plant that when he fought David Benavidez, even after the Canelo Alvarez lost by knockout, it was one of the biggest fights in boxing. So you tell me how that apparently is a cherry pick or how Caleb Plant is a horrible fighter and then he fights David Benavidez even after he loses to Canelo Alvarez and it's one of the best fights in boxing. That makes no sense. On top of that, Billy Joe Saunders versus Andre was supposed to be one of the biggest fights and one of the best fights in boxing, according to these guys, when they thought that Andre was going to be able to take advantage and beat him. Then when it turned to Canelo, all of a sudden the fight was trash, you know? Uh, when it came down to and Callum Smith, you know, I'm not saying that he's the most talented fighter that I've ever seen, but he was a guy that won the Super Six Series tournament there. He was the Ring Magazine champion, and he's a guy that's probably about around around a natural light heavyweight. Second, he's never fought anybody in the top five. On keep in mind that the fighters that Andre Ward defeated in the 168 pound weight division, a lot of them were Europeans as well. Now, when you talk about you know, the talent. If you want to say that some of them were more talented than some of the fighters that Canelo Alvarez fought, you could argue that. I wouldn't necessarily have a huge problem with that, you know. But once again, this 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 always kind of made me laugh, this narrative of we don't give Canelo Alvarez credit over these European fighters, blah, 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 right? But you give all the credit in the world to Andre Ward for defeating guys like, you know, Carl Frosch, who's from Britain, by the way, and Boxing Ego and a lot of these other guys, they say that, the British fighters are very weak and blah, 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 and all sort of stuff. I wouldn't personally say that. Now, would I say that Carl Frosch, you know, now, you know, you can say that Britain at times are not always the most talented pool of fighters. But Carl Frosch was a talented fighter. He just was a very one-dimensional fighter. He he was, he pretty much had a very good left hook. He had a very good right hand. He had no defense to speak of whatsoever. You know, he had a chin that was great, but he was not, you know, he, he was an A-grade level fighter, but he was not in my view, what I would count as an all-time great fighter. He was a very good to great fighter. He was not an all-time great fighter. And you talk about Mikel Kessler, and that's pretty much around the same thing there. Those guys were not all-time great fighters, but Andre Ward does deserve credit because they still were great fighters. Now, now the biggest one of his career, of course, was probably over that of Sergey Kovalev, who was probably about a level above a lot of those other guys. Box Rec's only list. Joe Kalzaki, different era. He didn't fight Andre Ward, didn't fight Frotch, and he didn't fight Kessler, right? However, Joe Kalzaki also... I would have very much loved to have seen Carl Frosch versus Canelo Alvarez. I would have loved to have seen that fight, you know, just to see if Canelo could have got around the power. I think more than likely he could have. Because once again, Carl Frosch, he had a right hand from hell, but he also had very little defense to speak of. You know, he was, you know, I'm not going to say that he was a complete brawler. You know, he was a little bit of a sniper, but there was certainly certain skills, you know, in his little, you know, skill set that were lacking. Who didn't fight anybody in this top list. People want to see him fight Carl Frotch. It didn't happen, right? And he didn't fight against Andre Ward or Canelo. Yet, the top five list, the number three guy beat the number four guy and beat the number five guy in the Super Six tournament. Yeah. Keep in mind that Mikhail Kessler's first loss was against that of Joe Calzaghe. You know, so a lot of these guys, they always love to pump up Andre Ward, especially the LDBC and New Media channels. And they love to say, oh, he beat Mikhail Kessler, who was the favorite to win that tournament, and Carl Frosch and blah, 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 and all sort of stuff. And listen, I give Andre Ward great credit for that. I do not diminish what he did. You know, he defeated a relatively, you know, decent super middleweight division. I'm not going to say it was necessarily... As strong as what the welterweight division was, you know, when Floyd Mayweather and when Pacquiao were around necessarily. But it still, in my view, was an A-grade level division with a lot of ripe talent. And Andre Ward, to be fair to him, he was able to clean that division out. You know, now if you want to mention that, you know, he got the Chad Dawson win, you know, I think because Chad Dawson went down to the weight division. And, you know, there may have been, you know, a couple other things. But other than that, Andre Ward's record was pretty clean, uh, you know. And on top of that, he defeated a lot of great fighters. Or, you know, some very, you know, some great fighters, you know, because if I'm thinking about great fighters on this list, 
Of course, you have Kovalev, you have Frost, you have Kessler. Uh, you have, uh, what the hell was that dude's name? Um, uh, <laughs> I can't remember his, his name at the moment. Oh, yeah, uh, Chad Dawson. Even though, of course, I believe he was a bit drained, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, and I think he also had Arthur Abraham. I would not necessarily call him a great fighter, you know, but if one wanted to say that he is, then, I mean, that's up to you. He doesn't have the top spot for power rankings all time. Let's keep, <laughs> let's continue. Demetrius Andrade. Now, I love Boo Boo Andrade, but how the f is he at number six? I agree. Like, that's absolutely ridiculous. Like, this list makes no fucking sense. <laughs> like, I'm not quite sure if Andrade would be top 10 in any division for me in history, just personally. But especially for the super middleweight division, like, dude, he's had one fight there against a bum. So it's like, are you serious? He's never even won a title there. Like, once again, this is what I'm saying. Boxing Rex rankings make no fucking sense whatsoever. When he literally fought one time, he fought one time, literally fought one time at this weight class, and it was just in January. Before that, he had kind of an abysmal resume for obvious reasons, wasn't able to get some signature fights, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, he says for some obvious reasons, and I'm, I'm assuming that Ego is saying, well, a lot of people are ducking him, and... Although that's somewhat relatively true, Andre also is a little bit of the creator of his own problems. By being with Bob Arum in top rank for way, 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 way too long, turning down certain fights that he should have accepted, even though, you know, he probably did believe that he was getting low balled in certain situations. But at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, you got to see the forest through the trees. But nonetheless, he just got to this division, so it literally makes no sense to have him number six. I could even understand, I mean, which is a little bit extreme to me, but he's about to fight David Benavidez at the end of the month. So I could even understand possibly if this list came out after that and if Andrade's able to beat, convincingly beat Benavidez, then you wanted to add him to the list. That is still... Isn't that very interesting, once again, that a lot of these guys claim that, oh, I can't have Canelo Alvarez on my, you know, all-time great list and over fighters like Barrera or Morales because he does things a certain way and he doesn't have that many all-time great wins. I can't have Fury as the greatest heavyweight ever, you know, no matter what he does, you know, because he's not that skilled and he gets dropped and blah, 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 and he doesn't have that many great wins. Like, I, I have all these channels and certain people that say that all the time. But Demetrius Andre will get one great win, the only great win in his career, over David Benavidez, over a dude that don't even have a fucking belt in that weight division. And that would be okay to put him top 10 of all time? Okay. A reach in my book, and that's because it's only two fights. And it's still a stretch. So once again, that just goes to show you that it's not really about, you know, in their mind, the amount of wins that they have. It's really about, you know, who the fighter is and what complexion they have. At least in my brain, the rationale would make a little bit more sense than to prematurely put someone in when he just moved up. Then you have Steve Collins. But I do agree. And maybe Boxing Ego isn't saying that he would for sure put him there. Uh, you know, but once again, if that were Canelo or a fighter that he did not like, he would say there's no chance that you put him top 10 of all time. There's no chance, you know. So once again, it just goes to show you that, you know, these guys are a little bit more lenient with their favorite black fighters than what they are with other fighters like Canelo, Fury, Lomachenko, yada, 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 yada. And Arthur Abram. And Arthur Abram. And yes, you guessed it. Arthur Abram, who made the top 10 list, had a, a great record, you know, 47 and 6. He's only been stopped once. Let's take a look. at Arthur Abraham was tough as nails, but he also was very straightforward, uh, which most German fighters tend to be. Uh, he was very stiff, and, and in my view, he was not a great fighter. Now, would he make a top 10 of all time, uh, you know, uh, 168 pounder list in my view yeah yeah he would this box wreck who did he lose to right inquiring minds want to know who did he lose to huh where is it 
I know it's somewhere. Oh, there it is. In 2011, he lost at the Home Depot Center, which is the stub hub, Dignity Health or whatever it's called now. He lost in 2011 to Andre Ward, right? Arthur Abram also lost to Carl Frotch. Right? Arthur Abraham lost to any legitimate A-grade fighter that he was ever going to fight. Whether it was Gilberto Zeta Ramirez, Carl Frosch, Andre Ward, any of those guys. Any legitimate A-grade fighter that had great talent, Arthur Abraham was not going to beat. He lost to Carl Frotch and was DQ'd versus Darrell. So, again, Andre Ward, so we're, we're just talking about the top top 10 list. Andre Ward, the number three guy, beat the number four guy, beat the number five guy, and beat the number eight guy all time, but somehow he's behind Canelo, who literally has beaten nobody on this list except for Danny Jacobs, who's in at number 10, right? And he beat him at 160 in a unification. I agree. And in my view, that doesn't make any sense. Now, of course, Boxing Eagle, he's going to keep ranting on about how, in his view, Andre Ward is disrespected because that's really the main message of this video. You know, <laughs> you know, it's good that he mentioned Andre and, you know, he mentioned Danny Jacobs, but, you know, he's not really going to mention, uh, you know, overall a lot of the other deficiencies. He especially is not going to mention Joe Kazagi that much because all he really cares about is that they need to keep Andre Ward at an all-time great level and make sure that Canelo Alvarez never gets there. Canelo did. So, as you guys can see, I'm breaking down the science. This list makes no sense. I agree. It definitely doesn't make any sense. And even Canelo, as great of a fighter as what he is, at least just in terms of the 168-pound weight division, he's not above either of those fighters. He's not above Joe Calzaghe, and he's not above Andre Ward. He's not above either of those fighters. Now, Andre Ward and Joe Calzaghe, in my view, they have a great debate about who the greatest 168-pounder is of all time. You have a really, really great debate about that. Anyone that you put at first place, I don't really have a problem with. But all three of those fighters, Canelo Ward and uh, what's his name, Calzaghe, uh, all three of those fighters, in my view, are around the same realm of greatness. So Arthur Abram eight. Sven Oteki, and then you have Daniel Jacobs. How is Daniel Jacobs, and I know Jacobs, that's my guy, but how is he number one at 168, or how is he in the top 10 at 168? I agree. That also makes no sense. The eight. I mean, how many, who did he even fight at 168 for real? Because most of his career and his best wins and performances have really been at middleweight, right? Julio Cesar Chavez, maybe? Maybe that was at a catchweight? You know, but I know that. Hell no, guys, hey, Max, guys, it's a big drama. It's nothing, it's pious. Right? We know the Triple G fight was at 160. I did think Jacobs won there. He of course you did. Of course you thought Denny Jacobs won. What a shock. <laughs> Once again, what a shock that every time a black fighter in a close fight, you know, when they end up losing a fight, you know, especially to a Caucasian fighter, one of these other fighters, you know, oh, they got robbed, or oh, I thought that he lost. Uh, of course you do. Of course you do. And that's why these guys, you know, it's a very good thing that they're not judges because they cannot get, you know, their racial, you know, motivation out of the damn way. They just can't do it. And don't get me wrong. At, you know, when I first watched that fight, I thought that there was a possibility that maybe Danny Jacobs, you know, that maybe he, you know, could have potentially won that fight. But when I rewatched re it later on a few times, it was very clear that Gennady Golovkin, that he was just too accurate and he was too consistent with his jab and he was landing it way too much you know now it was very close it was probably about seven rounds to five eight rounds to four but it was in favor of Gennady eat Peter Quill and Kid Chocolate but again these are 160 this is the top 168 and this isn't just a one-time thing with Ego Ego also believes if you ask him that Woodley that you know he ended up winning over Jake Paul that Lomachenko lost uh against uh what the hell was his name? Uh, that one dude that he fought right before Devin Haney. You know, that little Latino dude. I can't remember his name. Uh, some more T's, I think, or whatever the hell his name was. You know, this is a constant occurrence with that of boxing ego. Of all time. <laughs> not not. It's not even like current. It's of all time. And just as I stated, Danny Jacobs, 37 and 4. He just has a few fights at 68. Julio Cesar Chavez, who missed weight and basically quit 
Look, it says Chavez Jr. quits in the corner round five, right? Refused to do a lot of... <laughs> Refused to do a lot of tests. Then you have Gabe Rosado. Again, that's not... He's not a 168-pounder. He got stopped by Angulo early in his career, and he's mostly a one... Well, Gabriel Rosado, I believe, did fight at 168 not too long ago. I think that he actually fought Danny Jacobs, and a lot of people actually thought that Gabriel Rosado ended up winning that fight. But Danny Jacobs ended up just pulling out the decision. Ever since that Canelo Alvarez fight, Danny Jacobs has completely fallen off. He's completely fallen off. But a certain amount of fighters have fallen off ever since they fought Canelo. But that just happens when they fight all-time great fighters. Because they think that they're in such a good state and they think that, you know, they're very good fighters. But then when they fight that all-time great level fighter, you know, it's just different. Now, to be fair, the Danny Jacobs fight with Canelo, it was relatively close. It was probably about seven rounds to five, eight rounds to four in favor of Canelo. You know, but still, ever since then, Dan Danny Jacobs has never been the same. 60-pounder. So, and some people thought this was a split decision. Some people thought Jacobs even lost to Rosado. And then I... Th yeah, I thought that it was possible that he could have lost to Rosado as well. But it was very close, so. But he beat John Ryder, but it was a loss on paper. So, again... I also probably would have given him the decision over John Ryder. I would have gave Danny Jacobs the decision over John Ryder. I probably would have gave Gabriel Rosado the decision over Danny... But, you know, both of those fights, you know, both fighters had their moments in certain spots. This list from BoxRec is disrespectful, and it makes no sense. No, Right, but it's only disrespectful to Andre Ward. <laughs> not not Joe Calzaghe, you know, not any other, you know, potential fighters. It's only disrespectful to Andre Ward. I agree that it's a little bit disrespectful, especially if you're talking about, you know, uh, putting a little bit of, you know, Canelo Alvarez over both Calzaghe and Ward. I think that in terms of all-time greatness, that he's probably around their level because all three of those fighters are within my top 30 fighters of all time, just in my personal view, because they've all three accomplished a lot and they were highly skilled, you know, for their weight divisions, you know. But at the end of the day, it's a little bit too soon in my view to say that Canelo is above both of those fighters for the 168-pound weight division, just a little bit too soon. Now, if he was able to defeat David Benavidez, then I could understand it, you know. But the real disrespectful thing is having fighters like Danny Jacobs and Demetrius Andre on there who have never even won fucking titles there. No how, no way. You have guys like Danny Jacobs and Demetrius Andrade who really haven't spent their whole career or and or done. Agreed. And good on you for mentioning that ego, even though it's very hard for you to get past that Canelo is ranked above Andre Ward on this list. Their best work in this weight class, they're primarily at 54 for Andre or 60 for Andre and 60 for Jacob. Then you have the number three guy who beat many names on this list and won the Super Six, as well as beating Kovalev, a new division up at 175, right? So just Right, but that doesn't have anything to do with 168. So, you know, even though you want to say, uh, you know, overall that that's a great accomplishment, and I agree that's a great accomplishment, that has nothing to do with the list of ranking the greatest 168 pounders of all time. Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. So we're just talking about the best fighters ever. Somehow they got Canelo number one. For Canelo, once again, is around Andre Ward's level of all-time greats. And Boxing Ego is never going to admit that because he hates him with a burning passion. But at the end of the day, once again, you cannot have the level of names on your resume that Canelo Alvarez has, you know, including Sergey Kovalev. When, you know, he was a little bit more wore down, but still a decent fighter. Miguel Cotto, Gennady Golovkin, Danny Jacobs, Laura Trout. You know, Billy Joe Saunders, Callum Smith, Caleb Plant, you know, Jamel Charlo, you know, and I'm sure I'm missing some other names. You cannot have all those names on your resume. And that's not even bringing up other fighters like Chavez Jr. and, you know, some other names on his resume that I'm probably not even thinking of. You know, Liam Smith, if you want to bring him up, I don't think he's a great fighter, but at least at one point in time, he was a champion. You know, all those fighters on his resume, and you're telling me that Canelo Alvarez is not comparable with Andre Ward. When if we talk about the champions that he's defeated, it's probably Carl Frost, Mikhail Kessler, Arthur Abraham, Chad Dawson, and Sergey Kovalev. You know, that's about five to six names that I just lifted off, listed off. And that, you know, that's a great accomplishment, especially for only two weight divisions. But let's not sit here and act like Canelo Alvarez has not done work within his career. And yes, if you talk about all-time great-wise, both Canelo and Andre Ward, they're probably around the same level.
they're probably around the same level. Now, are there certain things that Andre Ward does better than Canelo Alvarez, especially with the feet? Yes, but there's also maybe certain advantages that you could debate that Canelo has over Andre Ward, especially with the chin and overall with never being knocked down. And remember, Ego, you can't have Tyson Fury greater than some of the heavyweights because of how many times he's gotten knocked down. Well, Andre Ward's gotten knocked down more times than Canelo Alvarez, right? Now, now, of course, you know that argument. I think Ego, what he basically means to say is that he thinks that Tyson Fury is so unskilled because he's gotten knocked down several times in his career. But it's also happened to other heavyweights as well. Like I said, you know, you know, Lennox Lewis ended up getting knocked out by two guys that never even won titles before they ended up beating Lennox Lewis. Okay? That's what happened to Lennox Lewis. All right? You know? So once again, in a certain amount of other all-time greats, they've dealt with their hardships as well. But in terms of greatness, yes, Canelo, Andre Ward, Joe Calzaghe, they're all around that same level. For what? For Rocky Fielding and Billy Joe Saunders, again, another career 160 pounders. Andre yes, but he actually won a title at, at the 168 pound weight division. Now, I agree that Saunders is probably more of a natural middleweight, but at least Saunders won a title at the 168 pound weight division. Ward beating and defeating Carl Frotch at 68 in the Super Six tournament with an injured hand is far more impressive than really anyone that Canelo has beaten. At 168. I mean, his last fight was Jermel Charlo, who's a great. I would probably agree that the win over Carl Frosch at the 168 pound weight division is more impressive than anything that Canelo was done at the 168 pound weight division. But at the same time, I just don't think that Carl Frosch, I don't see him as an all time great fighter. And once again, this is, this is also another conversation because whenever someone doesn't like a fighter, that's always their first point to bring up. Well, how many all-time great, you know, first ballot Hall of Famers have they really defeated, right? But do you really need to have, you know, 76 Hall of Famers on your resume, you know, to be one of the greatest fighters of all time? You know, is Carl Frost really someone that you would consider as an all-time great fighter? I wouldn't, you know, would you, to be honest with you, all the fighters on Andre Ward's list, I don't think I would consider any of them as all-time great fighters. I don't think I would consider Kovalev an all-time great fighter. I think he's a great fighter. But how many people are going to be looking later on down the line and saying, man, Sergey Kovalev was an all-time great fighter? How many people are going to be saying that Mikael Kessler was an all-time great fighter? Or Arthur Abraham? Or Carl Frosch? Or Chad Dawson? None of those guys are all-time great fighters. Now, they were great fighters. But a big part of the reason why maybe they weren't debatably all-time great fighters is because Andre Ward was in their way. So once again... I'm not one to really, you know, decrease someone's value or decrease overall someone's resume just because, you know, oh, well, those guys weren't looked at as all-time great fighters and blah, blah, blah. All that is a bunch of horseshit that usually is looked at to usually decrease someone's resume or their rankings just because they don't like someone. So once again, I'm not one to usually do that. Fighter, but he's a great fit. Unless, once again, I think your resume is just very, very poor. And I think that you were in a very weak division, like that of a Jamel Charlo, or that of a Inouye, you know, before he ended up beating Stephon Fulton, or that of a Terrence Bud Crawford at 140 pounds, you know. Then, then okay, I might jump in and say something. But I think that 168 at the time was a relatively competitive weight division. I just think that Andre Ward, that he clearly was the best there, and he proved it. The four-pound fighter. Andre Ward, imagine, can you imagine if he pulled up a guy from like Margarito or something from 54 all the way to 168. No one would give Andre Ward credit. So I wanted to make this video because I found this list. Well, let me also state this. Andre Ward is bigger than what Canelo Alvarez is. Andre Ward is about 5 foot 11 to 6 foot, somewhere around there. I don't know what level of a reach that he has. But Andre Ward, you can tell just by his build and by his height and his reach, He's at the very least a natural 168 pounder to a natural, natural light heavyweight fighter. That's what Andre Ward is. Canelo is not that type of guy. So once again, Canelo is a guy that is 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 7, somewhere around there, that height with a 71 inch arm reach. And he's a little bit stockier built than, you know, some of the middleweight fighters. But what he pretty much is, is a slightly bigger middleweight fighter. Andre Ward is a for sure 168 to 175 pounder. And that's why Canelo Alvarez, in my view, even though I can't count it as one of the great 168-pound wins because Charlo is not a 168-pounder, but in my view, I still count it as a great win because I don't think that the size, you know, advantage is really as big as what a lot of people were saying that it was. 
because once again, Jamel Charlo, he could easily fight at 160, and Canelo Alvarez, he's staying at 168 because, you know, he's getting up there, and, you know, he doesn't feel like shedding off a whole lot of other pounds, and, you know, not eating as much, you know, when he's starting to get a little bit older, and it's a little bit harder to lose the pounds and the calories, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, when it comes down to, once again, Canelo is not really a complete natural 168 pounder. It's highly disrespectful, and I've talked about this for years, box rec, whatever system they use, somebody tried to break it down and said it's some kind of point system. And I agree. It really doesn't make any sense. Bo boxing wrecks bo uh, point system. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And if you get more points for beating certain people, I don't know. Like literally baboons overall must run that website. You know, some, some sort of animal, <laughs> baboons, squirrels. I don't know overall what animal you want to say overall is running that fucking website. But that website overall, there's complete idiots running that website. I tried to break it down, but for me, no matter how you break it down, it's terrible if the final end result is this list where you got guys who really haven't spent careers at 68 and they're being listed as all-time greats in 168-pound division. I agree. Makes no sense. And then you have somehow Andre Ward behind a guy like Joe Kalzaki. Listen, I'm just being real. You can say that Andre Ward is behind Joe Kalzaki. Now, these guys aren't going to say that, once again, because Joe Kalzaki is a Caucasian fighter. But could you say that Joe Kalzaki is ahead of him? Yes, you could. This is going to hurt some feelings. I never really rated Joe Kalzaki. Like, he's good. Of course you didn't, because he's a Caucasian fighter. <laughs> yeah, of course you didn't. Once again, overall, you know, uh, when it comes down to, you know, what what a shock. You know, what a shock that Boxing Ego, who's ahead, you know, a part of the pro-black cult, what a shock that he doesn't rank Joe Calzaghe that I. He a good little fighter, but I didn't rate him like I rate on. Joe Calzaghe was a great fighter, and he's around the same level as an Andre Ward. It just is what it is. Andre Ward and other greats that we've seen in the sport. I feel like a lot of Calzaghe's be best wins and accomplishments were past prime Bernard Hopkins or Roy Jones Jr. But Bernard Hopkins was not really past his best. It's just that Bernard Hopkins never could really win against the A-plus level fighters. Now, Roy Jones Jr. clearly was past his best. Roy Jones Jr. was. You know, Bernard Hopkins was not. And the reason why that is is because Bernard was still beating guys like Antonio Tarver. He was still beating guys like Winky Wright, Kelly Pavlik. He beat all three of those guys, three of those guys in a row, A-grade level fighters, champions, right before he got to Joe Calzaghe, and then all of a sudden he goes to Joe Calzaghe, and he's just out of his best. And understandably, he was about 44, maybe even a little bit older in terms of that fight. And so many people will take a look at me, and they'll say, what the hell are you talking about? That's crazy. Once again, not every fighter age is the same. You know, Bernard Hopkins was a dude, you know, overall, that started to really hit his peak in the late 30s into his 40s. You know, that's just how he was. Of course, a lot of fighters cannot do that, but that's when Bernard Hopkins ended up usually getting the biggest wins of his career. You know, now if it's Manny Pacquiao, you know, when you're talking about a 43, when he lost to Ugas, you know, and he clearly had no legs left, or you're talking about Sugar Ray Leonard when he lost to Hector Macho Camacho, you know, and he clearly does not have the same legs or not the same fighter, you know, then okay, that's understandable. You know, but Bernard Hopkins, I understand that he was older in age. He was not really past his best. He was in the midst of the prime of his career. When Bernard started getting past his best, that was probably around the time when Sergey Kovalev fought him. You know, I've been loving Vegamore for the last two years. I, if you watch my videos, you know that I... You know, he didn't really fight a prime Roy Jones or certain names like Carl Frotch. So how could I say he's an all-time great, you know? Well, he did defeat Mikael Kessler, who's on this list. He did defeat Eddie Lacy, who was the hyped-up American fighter, and he beat the shit out of that man. <laughs> Overall, at 168 pounds, I believe. He ended up beating Bernard Hopkins. Now, of course, I was at 175, you know, I believe, you know, and, uh, you know, but he also beat a couple of other really good names, I believe, at 168 pounds. So Carl Frosch, you know, or excuse me, Carl Frosch, you know, Joe Calzaghe, if you were going to put him above Andre Ward, I don't really have a problem with it. If you were to put Andre Ward above Joe Calzaghe, I don't really have a problem with it either. Once again, if Joe Calzaghe was a black American fighter, these guys would be putting him in their top 10 to top 20 of all time, easily. People are talking about he got a perfect record, which is great, but 
it's easier to keep that perfect record intact when you don't fight certain people. Andre right, but he did fight certain people. <laughs> he did fight certain people. Now, he didn't fight Roy Jones Jr. when he was at his best, but he fought Eddie Lacy. You know, he fought Mikael Kessel when he was undefeated. You know, or Mikael Kessel, however you pronounce his name. He fought, you know, Bernard Hopkins when he was looked at as one of the top five pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. A light heavyweight champion and coming off with three great wins. You know, so Joe Calzaghe, and I'll say this. I don't put him in my top ten because I also agree a little bit that his resume does not have as much depth as other fighters. But Joe Calzaghe is right there probably with Bernard Hopkins. He's probably right there with, you know, Andre Ward and some of those other guys. And some people might say, you know, how can he be right there with Bernard Hopkins when Bernard has more names on his resume? And that's very true. But the problem is, is that Bernard Hopkins almost never beat any of the legitimate A-grade level names that could actually compete with him in terms of size and talent. The only guys that he ever really defeated that were very big name fighters were the guys that clearly were about one or two weight classes smaller than him. In Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Tito Trinidad, you know, no offense, but even though the Winky Wright and Kelly Pavlik and, you know, and Antonio Tarver fights, even though those are all great wins, are those guys really, <laughs> really looked at on the same level as Roy Jones and, you know, Joe Calzaghe? I want to put him there. Trey Ward, we know he didn't duck no smoke. He didn't duck any fades. He got a new book coming out. Make sure you guys cop that. I believe you can pre-order it on Amazon. I just think this is super disrespectful. I don't think Andre Ward is tripping. I don't know what people wanted from him in his career. They want him to trash talk more, but to have him, to have him, they didn't even put, now I just think about it. They didn't even put Roy Jones Jr. on this list, but you got Sven Audeke. Like, come on, bro. This is a terrible list. I would probably have to remember what all Roy Jones did at 168, but I, I probably agree. Roy Jones probably did do a lot at 168 pounds. I would probably put him on the list, but I, I can't really remember what all he did. That also gets me thinking about James Tony. You know, I can't really think, you know, if James Tony was a 168-pound champion or a 175. I can't really remember. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen the Bernard Hopkins versus James Tony fight. You know, that would have been very interesting to see if Bernard actually could have defeated a very talented, you know, fighter of similar size. And like I said. And, you know, I always see these people, you know, in the comment section saying that, oh, you know, if Bernard was, you know, several years younger, imagine what he would have done to Joe Kazaki. He wouldn't have done shit. He wouldn't have done shit overall other than headbutt and low blow and bitch to the referee the whole entire time, which is what he always did in the biggest fights of his career when he knew he was losing. That's all he would have done. Somebody tried to break down. Box Rec's cool for, like, the weigh-ins and, you know, see how much weight people were and, like, references like that. However... This list doesn't make sense. And it doesn't really matter how you arrived at this. However you arrived at this particular list, it shows a major, major flaw in the system. I agree. If you have a list like that. So no matter... I would have loved to have seen Andre Ward versus either Arthur Beta Beaver or Dimitri Bivol. I would have loved to have seen either of those fights just to see how you would have been able to handle them. I could have maybe betted, you know, with Andre Ward to beat those guys, but... Those guys are no joke. And in my view, both of those guys, I probably would have put them just in terms of skills above any of the fighters that Andre Ward ever fought. But you know what? To be fair, he did defeat some very decently skilled fighters. What? And once again, that is by no way of me saying that Andre Ward fought bums because I don't think that that's fair to say. I think he fought some great fighters, you know, or at least some very decently talented fighters, you know. But uh, I, I would have loved to have seen... Him versus Zerto Ramirez or, you know, him versus Bivol or Better Beef. Those would have been great fights. Or, you know, maybe even Usyk. But I think Usyk would have probably been a little bit too big. Like, is going into the rankings and however you compute those, those end results is terrible. Canelo's definitely not number one all-time pound for pound. Canelo, he couldn't hold the jock strap, in my opinion. I lost Barton ready. He couldn't hold the jockstrap of a lot of talented fighters prime for prime. Well, he could. But once again, you're a salty hoe uh, because you don't like Canelo. And you have to make sure overall once again that, you know, his all-time great, you know, possible ranking is majorly, majorly decreased. And they're doing that with all the fighters that they don't like. Fury, you know, Golovkin, Canelo, you know, in a way, all these guys. Right. You know, it just makes no sense to say... That Canelo can hold the jockstrap of these guys 
when he's defeated very decent fighters throughout his day. It just makes no sense. You know, once again, you can't have all the names on your resume and just say that he he can't hold the jock strap with these guys. Like that just doesn't make any sense. I don't think Canelo would beat Andre Ward at 168 at all. And he may not, but once again, Canelo's not a natural 168 pounder. <laughs> so once again, you know, you can say that all you want to, but at the end of the day, Canelo's not a natural 168 pounder. Like, I wouldn't, I don't even think that would be Ward's toughest fight. I don't, Canelo won't even fight David Benavidez. He's definitely not on no level of Roy Jones and um, a guy like James Tony. So it's just like, this list is terrible, man. Well, Canelo is definitely, in terms of all-time great, he's definitely above James Tony. <laughs> now, in terms of 168, yeah, I probably would put him there too. Because to be honest with you, I really don't know uh, what James Tony really did throughout his career. I mean, he did some great things, but above Canelo, no. And this is one of the leading outlets for what they do in box rec. That's why Andre Ward just said, okay, because there's not much else to say other than okay, because the list is terrible, dreadful list. Subscribe to my channel, let me know I did, and I'm out. Introduce but anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Boxing Eagle pretty much had the reaction <laughs> that I thought he was going to have, mainly being pissed off about that Canelo Alvarez rating, you know, which I knew was going to grind his gears, because once again, he hates Canelo with a burning passion. And once again, these pro black kitty black channels, they keep trying to say, oh, Canelo and Fury and all these other guys, they can't hold a jock strap. Once again, you can't really say that about fighters that have accomplished some of the things that they have in their career. Once again, it'd be different if Canelo, you know, if he didn't really have multiple A grade level names in his career or something like that, or he was only fighting guys that, you know, clearly, you know, maybe were you know, a little bit worn out or not a grade and, you know, he had fought in weaker divisions, but you can't really say that about Canelo. I mean, they'll try to say that about Canelo, but the truth is about Canelo is that Canelo has fought a lot of the bigger names of his career. So it is what it is. But anyways, just to give my little lasting note, do I believe that Canelo, that he's number one of 168 pounds of all time? No, I don't believe that. Uh, but I do think that, you know, he could be on his way, debatably, if he defeats David Benavides, debatably. He could be there. But Andre Ward and Joe Calzaghe at the moment, I probably would put him above there as well. Roy Jones, I would have to see because, once again, I don't really know what all he accomplished there. Uh, but we'll, uh, you know, I, I would have to look that up. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.